Shoshi here, and you are watching Costume Literate. Costume Literate is here to help you become literate in the ways of costume. One way to do that is to find good sources for research. And the best way to find those is through Google Scholar. Google Scholar is a search engine for academic research. You type in keywords, just like in regular Google, and it will find you academic papers, articles, books, journals, etc. on the subject you are looking for with those keywords. This would help you understand more about the period and place you are looking into. It's not so much for construction guides and period tailoring books. For that, you'd be better off looking on archive.com, and maybe I'll make a video about that in the future. So, how do you find Google Scholar? Well, Google it. So, here we have Google Scholar open. It says Google Scholar. It has a search box. It says, stand on the shoulders of giants, which means your learning and research is standing on the shoulders of those researchers who came before you. If you are looking for a specific article, you can just type in the title or the researcher's name. If it doesn't show you the exact title that you were looking for, you can add quotes on either side of the title. And in this case, I didn't find what I was looking for, so I added the author's name. If you don't know exactly what you're looking for, or you are trying to find research on a subject, you can type in simple keywords or more complicated phrases. So let's say you're looking for research on corsets. Oh, the corset, a cultural history. That looks interesting. So what happens if I find an article or book that I want to read later, but I want to keep scrolling now to find more articles and read them later? Well, I can click the star and that will save it to my library. Then I can review it later. Or what if I was looking into the history of muslin? Let's search for muslin. Apparently there are a lot of people named muslin. <laughs> muslin cloth. So it seems to be showing me technological developments in fabric and not so much history. So muslin cloth. History. I'm finding nothing. Maybe if I change it to fabric. Here we go. Muslin. Oh, this dressing for a tropical climate, the role of native fabrics in fashionable dress in early colonial India. True Indian muslin and the politics of consumption in Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey. Mr. Tilney knows his muslin. A bunch of these seem to be talking about muslin and Austin, but they might not go so much into the history of how they were made. So, the word Bengal, which is one of the areas where muslin was produced. Now, how do I even know to look for these keywords? Well, I read the Wikipedia page on muslin, and that's how I know that I might be looking at the 17th and 18th centuries, Dhaka in Bengal. So and that's how I know that I can look for words such as mulmul, different kinds of different muslins, or the East India Company. Apparently some guy named William Bolt. Do however try to find research and resources from the people and areas which you are researching. For instance, when looking into the history of muslin, you might find records from the Dutch and British East India companies, but you don't want to only read those records. You would probably also want to look into resources by people from India and Bangladesh. Also pay attention to the date of the article. You don't want to be reading research that is way out of date. If it says something like this kind of date, it might either be research that is out of date or a primary source depending on what it is. <laughs> so there is this thing that I've read that British rulers cut off the thumbs of weavers to keep them from producing muslin that could compete with the newly formed British muslin industry. So I'm going to add the word thumbs. I'm not really finding ones with the word thumbs. I might have too many keywords, so I'll delete one or two of them and let's see if this works. Here we go. Cotton textiles in England. The East India Company's attempt to exploit developments in fashion. This is interesting, but this article is quite a bit old. More research needed. So what if I like the look of a certain article? So I wanted to find similar articles to that one. Well, I can click on related articles and then hopefully it will show me similar research. If, let's say, I was looking for information on corsets, and I typed in corsets, and, oh, look what it showed me, Nora Waugh, Corsets and Crinolines. Well, what if I wanted to find similar research on the subject that was not this exact book? Well, I can click on related articles, and then it will show me things that are related, such as, oh, look, the cut of women's clothes, patterns of fashion too, and then you will also find things that you might not have been familiar with before, such as, Dress and Undress, A History of Women's Wear, The History of Underclothes by C.W. Cunnington, English Women's Clothing in the 19th Century, A Comprehensive Guide. You see this little number here? This means that it was cited by this number of other articles. So if we wanted to see who cited this one, we can click on this. 
and it will show us all the articles or books that cited that specific article. Or if the author's name is underlined, you can click on it and it will show you everything that that author has written. If the title says book next to it, it means that it's a book. And if it's a clickable link, it's very possible that it'll be available through Google Books. In that case, you can click on it and it'll take you to a version of the book. It might not be the whole book, a lot of the pages might be hidden, and to be able to access the full book you might have to buy it. But if you're looking for something very specific, it's possible that those pages will be available through the free Google Book view. If it's in an article and it says PDF on the side, that means you can click on it and it'll have a PDF of the full article. If there's no free PDF available, you can click on the link in the title, and you'll probably be able to access it through a site that gives access to universities. So, if you've ever been to university and you have a university email, you will probably be able to get access to a lot of these articles. If not, there's still a bunch available for free in the PDFs in Google Scholar. However, if there is neither a PDF nor a link in the title, you can often find the article by clicking on all versions. And it shows me other links where it does have the link in the title. And it will show me the book or article. So even if you've never been to college or university and you don't have access to such an email, you can still access a lot of free articles online. When you're finished and you found all the articles you want to read, you can go to my library on the top right of the screen and you will see all the articles you wanted to read. If you want, you can filter them by date on the left of the screen and read and research to your heart's content. So go forth and research! Good luck! Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell to see future videos. Let me know if you'd like to see a video about archive.com or something else to help you research. Goodbye!